You know, the, the growth comes from hitting it, exhausting it, finding the burn, and keeping the burn alive. If you take too much time in between sets off, the fire goes out. That fire is what heats up that clay and you can start molding it. Don't let it go out, guys. Let it go out when you leave here, when you get all the nutrition, you build. Don't talk in here. Perform in here. When you perform in here, when you go out there, you don't need to talk, do you? No. Success is something you should never have to speak about. You cheapen its resolve if you speak about it, you speak for itself. Meaning, the guys that come to the gym and they talk all the time in the gym, because <laughs> they ain't there yet. The guys that come here and sound professional just perform. When they leave the gym, but they still don't talk. Their body talks for them. And life is given to them. Everyone's like, oh, they must have a real easy life, real easy life. That help they do. Because they paid for it. They've earned that motherfucker. Get the edge. Own it. Work for it. Fight for it. Caress it. Give birth to it. With that comes whatever dream you want. It begins today, it continues tomorrow, and it never fucking dies. Progression, man, is a key to happiness. Always in a progressive state of progress. You stop, you stop progressing and start moving towards progress, then all of a sudden you lose purpose in life. When you're always moving forward and having a belief in something, then all of a sudden, what you're doing actually has purpose. And that makes it very valuable. Perseverance will always override potential. Always override, override genetics. And perseverance isn't this marathon of life. It's not this long race that we have to pursue. It's a lot of short races, back to back to back. Every day we get up and we fight for it. And we plant those seeds in the ground of what we want to bear fruits on. If you want to go through the pain here, if you want to sacrifice today, that sweat equity today for tomorrow's betterment, meaning you're willing to plant that seed on fertile ground of something that you want to see, you know, blossom in your fruits of your labor that you can harvest later. It begins today, guys. You must be that person now that you want others to remember you by later. What else are you gonna do? You can come in here and kill it right now or stay home on the couch, you know, watching the life pass by. I know it sounds like habitual what I say all the time, but sometimes you got it ingrained in your head. What else would you be doing right now? Taking the time off or taking the time to get ahead? It's just, that seems so simple to me, that solution, that I'll, you know, the choice is there. If it doesn't seem so, so easy to you, it's because you don't believe in yourself. You believe in yourself, you want to be in here killing it. Because giving you that much more of a chance because you believe you can become that. The people that don't come in here because they're tired and stuff are people that don't believe in themselves. That's why they don't see the asset of being in the gym to grow. They see it as a waste of time because they don't believe they can ever get there. So therefore, why take the precautionary steps to sharpen and, you know, and hone the arsenal to really go to battle? Because they don't even want to go to battle because they know they're going to lose. Fuck those people, man. The only thing that ever can give you peace in the, peace in the world where you, your sleep is pure is when you give it your all. 110% is left there. Work, in the gym, whatever the endeavor at, at hand is. You leave it all there. That's the only thing that ever counts for peace in the world. If you don't do that, part of your soul is left there. I mean, if you only give it 60%, part of your soul is left there. And you go to sleep, all you can do is think about it, think about it. It's kind of like that, Expression I always tell you guys, burn the midnight oil now. Otherwise, stay awake in the midnight hours wondering what if. It's hard to embark on things. I'm not saying it isn't. Hard to get up and go to work when you're dead tired and you don't want to go. But what's a lot harder is if you don't go to work. You don't try it. And then something happens remarkable you weren't part of. And all you can do is think back and regret, wondering what could have been if I did show up. You can't answer those questions, man. You gotta be present. Whether it's 100% you have, 50%, dead tired, wide awake, you have gotta always be present. Guys, one day, you gotta graduate in life. You can't always be the pupil, you gotta be the master. You gotta be the guy that's creating the material for others to try to study from. You can't always ask a question, you're asking a question because you don't believe in the journey you're about to embark on. Mentally, you must believe it before you physically start it. Otherwise, it will never reach your most barrel. Your questions will be figured out. When you hit the rock bottom, when you fail, and you hit the fucking pavement, you learn to fucking catch yourself. That's the lesson you never forget. Stop trying to learn from everybody else. Believe in yourself as enough of a reason to transform into something great. Stop sitting back saying, yeah, man, that'd be cool, that'd be cool, I wanna be this, I wanna be that. Grab your fucking nuts and be it. You're never gonna come up short, man. You're gonna pay your dues today. So when it matters tomorrow, all your effort, all your potential is left there at the moment that opportunity arises. So it doesn't go un unnoticed, unpassed, guys. 
You guys must, you must believe in yourself enough to be the person now of what others will remember you for later. It begins right fucking now. If you don't believe that you are that person now, no one's gonna give a shit to remember you for it later. It's the small things, guys. The small fucking things in life that add up to be those monumental tasks to achieve it that someone's remembered for. The small things. The small deeds of life done. Ten times better than the great deeds just planned. When you're on that tenth rep, you're like, oh, that's, that, that's good enough. That's not good enough. You said 15. So I don't care if you got a light in the weight, you're gonna hit fucking 15. Or you're gonna grab one of these weak motherfuckers in here, like, get the fuck over here. You're not doing anything over there, but y'all chapping. Get over here and be a, do some kind of purpose. Help me get five fucking more. There is no like, oh, that's good enough. Because we don't know if it's good enough, do we? No, we don't. It's not until the end hour, the last minute, you know, when everything's on the line, if your hand's hell victorious or not, do we know if it's good enough? I always say it, man, I'll say it again, it's so fucking, such pearls here. If your mentality is never one saying good enough today, I promise tomorrow you'll always have enough. Because good enough is never known until the final hour, if you're the one standing. And doesn't it suck if you're not standing? And all this time you've been training hard, thinking it's good enough, but we don't know what is enough, do it. You really want to avoid all the criticism? See, I, I welcome the fucking criticism. Because all that says is that, dude, you're doing something to impact their lives. They respond negatively because they've never done anything in their life. That's why they're a critic. Never a player. Because they've never done anything, all they can do is cast goats and, and, and negative tip, negativity to someone that has done it. Because they weren't mad enough to ever do it in the first place. And if you really want to avoid all the critics in your life, then do nothing, say nothing, and be nothing. And you'll never get their attention. But if you are something, and you're doing something, you become something, guess what? You'll get their attention. And that pisses them off. They can never be what you are now. So the only thing they can do to make them feel good is try to bring you the fuck down. I say thank you for that. Thank you for acknowledging the fact that I'm doing something because I don't know who the fuck you are and you seem to know who I am. Works for me, fucker. Most people always they hit hard times. You know, the buddies come over, a girlfriend, try to comfort them. They always talk about some past accomplishment they did. Some past achievement. Remember when I did. Remember when I was. What about, how about who I'm going to be? Stop looking in the past for your greatest moment. No, right now, you're building your greatest moment about to be. The word regret, the past, past tense word, the present tense of regret is procrastination. You keep procrastinating, guys. That procrastination turns into regret. Regrets you can't do anything bad. Times change, moved on without you. If you regret anything, you'll see you backtrack and honest yourself. It came to fruition on a base of procrastination that formulated the form of regret that's always there next to your name for the rest of your life of what you didn't do. Breathing more right now, I am sure procrastination never turns to regret. Always prideful what I do. Never wondering what if. They gave me some weird fucking looks and everything else. Fuck them. You think I even noticed that? You think I give a shit about it? You know, no, I'm here for my own reason. My belief, where I'm going, in here provides a betterment for me, a purpose for me being here. They don't exist. I don't give a shit if the girl's fucking butt naked, bent over with a wet pussy asking me to come over. I got work to do. Because if I get my work done right, I'll have a line of those motherfuckers to choose from if I do it right. I don't alter my mission at hand. No one fucks with me. Because I don't allow them to. They don't pay my bill, that's why I don't give them any value. It's got to be that way. It's got to be unconditionally focused. You know, you're not in here in bears. You're not in here this. When I say commitment and belief has to be unparalleled, it's either you're in or you're out. What that means is that if you are in and you believe in yourself, no one can change that. Dreams to drive your destiny. Most focus on the dreams drive destiny. When you take out the drive, right, in that equation, dreams drive your destiny. You take the drive out, what you're left with is dreams becoming deeds. When you have 
a dream of something that drives you into something. When opportunity arises and you don't take advantage of that opportunity, that opportunity will wither into a demon, a fear, you're forever be chasing. Dreams, drive being the key word, destiny. The drive is up to you. This shit, early in the morning, is driving reality in my fucking team. When you first hit failure, that enthusiasm stays true. Hit failure again, stays true. The ability to fail and fail without losing enthusiasm ends up as a very, very successful person. They're doing it for the right thing. They're not doing it for the title. They're doing it for the belief in the journey. And that title at the end, the type of character that can achieve that title, very few can. Very few can. It requires that kind of torment, that kind of adversity, that kind of paying your fucking dues every day to home and weather. It's like a piece of steel that you put into a hot fire. It must go through that heat and torment to harden and make itself tough. You can't have some piece of plastic and go to battle with that. You need plastic fork, and what's that gonna do? Fuck you. You must go through the heat of life. The hard enough to bear the storms of life. And once you see some third party say, damn man, man, what are you doing, man? You look like, you know, you put on some size, or man, you look thin, man, what are you, man, you look great. All of a sudden, then you're like, oh really? Huh? Man, I'm just doing a little thing. Inside, you're like, fuck yeah, score, man. I'm, I'm fucking doing it. I'm actually saying I was gonna do something. I'm following up and making it happen for a change. Instead of just being like everyone else in society saying, oh, feel bad for me, or excuses this, or excuses that, you know? How about we fucking grab our nuts for a change and actually mean what we say? Be a pillar in the community. Someone that whose word isn't just isn't just voices, who stands behind it. That's the guy of responsibility. That's the one you can trust. His word means something. That's a, that's, that's a role model right there, guys. That's what you want to be. It's not about how big your fucking bicep is. It's about doing what you say you're going to fucking do. Seeing it through, man. Um, so those are the things I do, guys. Um, keep the motivation alive. The other thing I, I, I would do is really cut the fat out of your life. Once you're in shape, guys, you no longer have that body fat, right? You're lean. It's so much easier to stay in shape. The transformation is the hard part. Once you're in shape, to maintain an in shape state is simple. So you're 31 in shape. 60 years to live in shape. But everyone is just like, oh my God, how do you do it? How do you do it? And not only that, guys, but what Jake's talking about is how to lose body fat. How to lose, lose, lose. It's not about losing. It's about winning, man. It's about what you gain, man. It's not what you lose, it's what you gain. You got the confidence, the mindset to overcome things. You're seeing a positive energy within yourself. You know, resonating to other people, you're carrying yourself better, you're getting stronger, you're looking at you, you're happier in your life. Everything's a win, win, win. What's the alternative? That you're 30 now, next year you're 31, still out of shape, and you got 60 years to be out of shape. Always beating yourself up. That this, this monkey on your back, I just can't, I can't seem to get in shape, you know, listen to this, listen to that, you listen to the wrong shit, man. Start listening to yourself. The only thing that you're given in this world here is an opportunity to work hard. What that hard work ends up is guesswork. It's subjective. You don't you can't always control it. All you can do is put your best fucking foot forward. And that's all you can do in life. Everything else, I don't know. But how can we make our best foot forward be the best? With this leg workout. Tomorrow morning you should be stiff. You should walk a little bit like. Like crippled man. And I pray that when you're walking tomorrow all crippled like, somebody comes up to you and says, what's wrong with you? Because if they do, they ask you what's wrong with you. So the only thing that's wrong is that you're not walking the way I'm walking. Because my walk is in the path of success. Well, your walk is the path of forgotten soul. I'm not gonna be the victim anymore. I'm gonna identify the problem, problem solve, fix it, whatever it takes, and override it. When you do that, not only are you a betterment of a person, but you have the belief and the confidence that what the fuck's next? What else can I overcome? And the answer to that question is anything, anything. But if you sit back and you war game it, and you're not moving forward, and you just you know, you start thinking, all right, how am I gonna do it? How am I gonna do it? Hesitation builds. With hesitation comes fear, failure. What happens if I do fail? Right now it's good enough. I won't do some good. If I try it and fail, they're gonna think I'm my weaknesses. Fuck what they think! Fuck what they think!
They're seeing what the truth is. You are weak. You did fail. That's not a problem. That's not a negative. It's identified. It can be fixed. If never identified, never fixed. Once identified, worked on, then mastered. Moving on to the next thing. You've got to be your own master in your life. Meeting those moments, those experiences. You've got to realize what is, could be better, and how can it be better. Then you apply those values to it, to create it, knowing it will get worse before it gets better. This transformation here is the same as in the gym. You went in there, yeah, you're good, whatever else. But you're going to rip your body down, hit failure over and over again. You might puke, you might cry, you might sweat blood, sweat tears in that transformation process. The sweat after the dust and everything else and the drywall dust and fucking whatever. But eventually, it's sand and it's cough, it's pain and it's prime. It's situated and you're sitting there relaxing. Eventually you come back, you put the nutrition in your body, your body grows better than it was. The room more enhanced than it was. Started woke it up one day. Sleep that night, the person I went to sleep stronger mentally and physically. Then I woke up that morning after a good fucking day. I combined from a good week, good month, good year, good life. Take advantage of today. Tomorrow might not exist. Tomorrow, yes, becomes great. If tomorrow comes, it's a gift. What we have is a blessing of today. Make today happen. Just like every cent. If we're gonna use that metaphor of life, where you have a beginning birth date, and a dash of life, and you have your death date. And in the gym is the life of your workout. Being you come in and that's your that's your your day, your birthday, right? When you walk in, and as you leave, that's your death of each workout. You have a you have a, a born date and a dead date of each workout. And the dash in between is the time you're here, your life. Well those days of your life, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, is set one, two, three of this exercise, one, two, three of that exercise, one, two, three of that exercise. You combine up all those sets to make the dash of your time in the gym valuable and day after day that dash starts to glow brighter harder faster you become the person you want to be so that dash of life is something remembered it doesn't matter guys where you currently are you know it's a business you travel in life life is not about where, what you're born into or what you die it's that how far you travel man that's what's that's what's empowering willing to sacrifice right now this pain accepting absorbing the pain knowing and that pain is your body telling you you're fixing something that's insufficient in your life that you will go now improve it upon. That pain will never be, you know, the demise of your potential. You push through it right now. You don't have those many opportunities in life to take that gamble and allow life to play you. You must play life. You must see the opportunity once it's in the air. When you control the element, when you take luck out of the fucking equation, Replace it with a trained ability. That's success every single time. And that's all you need. No. Ellen, you said best of luck to you in 2012. I appreciate that. What I will say back to you is not that. I will say to you, I hope this year you continue to master and remaster your trained ability. And then I hope that collides with an opportunity. That's what it does. You'll be ready for it. And that opportunity won't pass you by. If you guys do not give it, if you're all in there, don't ever expect to become the man you dream of out here. It starts in there, where it starts in the classroom, where it starts studying at home, or having the idea in your head, that's where it starts. And then, once it starts, it requires work ethic, a sacrifice, and a diligence. Those are the nine yards I'm talking about. You throw that kind of effort into any kind of idea, start point, you will cross the finish line in life. You will become what that person is you want to be. You will have that trophy on the mantle. You will be proud of yourself. People will look up to you as an example of, of, of the truth. In a world that is just falsified everywhere, you can be a fucking shining star of truth because you went through the bullshit and you came out clean. Pull nine yards. Or put up to stay fit. Enjoy that one. Let's <laughs> make the most of a set, man. Making the most of the seconds and minutes, the hours and days of your life, man. That's the heart of a champion right there. They never say. It's the bicep of a champion. The ego of a champion. It's always the heart of the champion.
that matters. Because at the test of time, one of the most strenuous adversities of life is the heart and the headstrong ability to keep the pulse going of belief when the body is shut down physically. Mentally, you survive and push through it. The heart of a champion. Not the fucking ego, not the goddamn bicep. The heart. And what drives a heart. And the beat of it is what you got upstairs. That makes it break every success in life. Oh, I went on jumping with somebody. And uh, and this girl was looked over and she was fearful. She wasn't gonna jump, man. She she was all about talking about it. When we got there, she looked over, she climbed over, and just her legs started shaking like crazy. She couldn't even control herself, and she couldn't do it. And the instructor's like, "Come on, you gotta go." She's like, "Ah!" I started screaming, "I can't go! I can't go! I can't go!" Finally, they're like, "All right, you're done. You come on over." She throws her foot back over the bridge to come back onto the other side. I came around the corner and decked that bitch off. She went down screaming, as if someone just shot her, stabbed her, you know, you know, cut her. This, uh, you know, a frightful noise. She came down, the bungee came down, and she came back up. I'm talking about the a kid on Christmas. A spirit of, you know, a girl that just got engaged. Just had her first new newborn, you know, that, that excitement that you can't buy, you have to earn. Total, within a second, it just changed. That fear left, confidence came back, she was alive, empowered.